In this edition of Manned Space, we soar with the astronauts of Gemini 9 and take a look at a collectible that may have aided in their survival in the event of a mission mishap. As part of its effort to land men on the moon, Project Gemini was conceived by the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, to develop and fine-tune the skills needed to achieve that goal. Scheduled to be the seventh manned flight of the Gemini program, Gemini 9 was to be commanded by veteran naval aviator Elliot C. C was to be joined by Major Charles Bassett of the United States Air Force. Backing up the crew of C and Elliot were veteran astronaut Thomas Stafford, and space rookie Eugene Cernan. It was the role of the backup crew to take over for the primary crew in the event one or both members of the prime crew were unable to perform their role. Both the primary and backup crews received the same training for the spaceflight. To that end, on February 28, 1966, both crews boarded their own T-38 Talon jet aircraft similar to the one shown here. With C. and Bassett in one aircraft and Cernan and Stafford in another, the crew set out from Ellington Air Base in Houston, destined for St. Louis, and a visit to the McDonald Aircraft Company, which was responsible for the manufacture of their spacecraft. The weather in St. Louis was poor, and visibility was greatly reduced. With Elliott C. at the controls, the pair attempted a first landing. Unable to get a visual on the runway, C. waved off the landing attempt to try another. The second attempt proved to be catastrophic. As he made his way toward the runway, C instead struck a building located on the airport. It happened to be the very building being used to house and ready their spacecraft for launch. The two astronauts were killed instantly, thus pushing Stafford and Cernan into the primary crew role. Their spaceflight redesignated as Gemini 9A they were set for launch on May 17, 1966. While Stafford and Cernan sat waiting to launch in their Gemini spacecraft, NASA launched an unmanned Agena target vehicle which was to enter orbit and which Stafford and Cernan would meet up with in space and dock with or attach to in order to perform their mission objectives. Due to a launch failure, the Agena never achieved orbit. Without a target vehicle, the launch of Gemini 9 was scrubbed and Stafford and Cernan would have to wait another day for launch. NASA later successfully launched and orbited a modified Agena target vehicle. A second attempt at a launch of Gemini 9 on June 1, 1966 also proved to be unsuccessful. With Gemini 9A rescheduled to launch on June 3, 1966 at 8.39 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the astronauts were up early for a breakfast of steak and eggs. With breakfast completed, the astronauts suited up ahead of their trip to the launch pad for an on-time liftoff. The rocket's engines came to life precisely on time and the astronauts were lifted off for the trip into space and a rendezvous with their target vehicle. Once in orbit, it took the crew of Gemini 9 just over four hours after launch to rendezvous with their modified Agena. Upon encountering the vehicle over the coast of Brazil, Stafford and Cernan knew immediately there was a problem. A shroud covering the docking module failed to fully deploy. Stafford advised NASA ground controllers in Houston, we have a weird looking machine here. He told them that it looks like an angry alligator. With the shroud in place, the crew would be unable to dock with the target vehicle. It would also delay another major objective of the mission, a spacewalk by Gene Cernan. Soon, however, Cernan was given the go-ahead to proceed with the extravehicular activity. It quickly became clear the spacewalk would be more difficult than expected. The flight plan called for Cernan to leave the spacecraft and to move to an experimental maneuvering unit 
that was mounted at the rear of the spacecraft and which he would wear like a backpack and maneuver around. His spacesuit was difficult to maneuver in and Cernan's movements were limited. According to Stafford, Cernan was soon huffing and puffing. Eventually, his faceplate had fogged up, making it nearly impossible for him to see. Concerned for Cernan's safety, Stafford put an end to the spacewalk. Once safely back inside the spacecraft, Cernan observed that there's a lot we don't know about EVA. Two days later, on June 6, the crew of Gemini 9A ignited their retro rockets and descended through the Earth's atmosphere like a fireball due to the intense heat caused by the atmosphere's friction. After 51 and a half hours in space, the crew safely splashed down in the Atlantic Ocean, less than one mile from the designated landing zone. It was the most pinpoint perfect landing of the Gemini program. Within minutes, the crew and their spacecraft were brought aboard the recovery vessel USS Wasp, which would return them back home. The collectible we'll examine today was carried aboard the Gemini 9A spacecraft, but fortunately did not have to be used. The Gemini spacecraft was equipped with ejection seats the astronauts would use to propel themselves away from the vehicle in the event of a major malfunction. Attached to the ejection seat was a survival kit containing specially designed equipment for use by a downed astronaut. The contents, meant to aid in preserving life under varying environmental conditions, were divided into two major stowage containers, a life raft container and a more general survival kit containing, among other things, a survival light, compass, and a medication kit that included a radio beacon which emitted a signal that would aid rescue personnel in locating the fallen astronaut. Modeled after the survival kits carried aboard Project Mercury spacecraft, pictured here as the kit carried during the flight of Aurora 7 on May 25, 1962. In this image, we are looking at a survival kit carried aboard the Gemini 4 spacecraft. Note the green and white colored cord. It is actually nylon tie line that was used to secure items contained in the kit. We're now looking at an artifact that was flown in space aboard Gemini 9A. The object is attached to a certificate that tells us it too is a nylon tie line that was used to strap items securely into an astronaut's survival pack. Note the certification telling us the object was indeed flown into space with Cernan and Stafford. The certification is signed by Tom Gallagher, who was a Project Gemini personal equipment technician, part of the Manned Spacecraft Center Crew Systems Division. It was the Crew Systems Division that developed the handheld maneuvering device used to propel astronaut Ed White during America's first spacewalk in 1965. A great Project Gemini space flown artifact, I obtained this fine piece of space history at a Regency Superior auction in October of 2011. Is there a particular space flight you'd like to see highlighted on manned space? If so, please leave a comment below. Thanks again for watching Man Space. Please watch for upcoming videos at least twice a week, during which I'll discuss the history of the space program by highlighting artifacts and memorabilia from my extensive space collection. Also, please like, subscribe, and click the notification button for more great content about manned space.